Uh, you know me as John or Jack McKegg. I'm fine with either John or Jack. I don't, neither, either one is fine. Um, you know, I grew up, uh, you know, with a legal name, John. And then I also, people call me Jack. Everyone call me Jack. So it actually kind of helpful having two annoying, having that annoyance of two names helped me sort of get used to that and unlock the whole oh, this, you know, the person is a corporation thing. Anyway, so, but I'm fine with either one of them. Um, and I'm here with uh, JesusChristTrust.net. Uh, thank you for the donations, the people that have made donations, and the people that are working on other information in there. Uh, I'm here to help keep up the good work. Now, let's get to a practical um, solution to our situation. Okay, because I, I tried to explain our situation. Now, uh, w what is my role? Um, understanding, you know, the latent uh, possibilities in our existence. They're latent. No one has discovered them yet, so they exist but they just are latent. They haven't been used yet. You know what I'm saying? They, No one has figured them out yet, but that didn't mean they didn't exist. You know, it's just information that hasn't been retrieved yet. But it's here, latent in our situation. So, you know, uh, first of all, God, uh, God's grace gives all makes all miracles happen period the miracle of life the miracle of this game the miracle of everything a tree existing existence existing you name it it's all god's fault right uh so all miracles happen because you know god has made them latent within our situation um and their methodologies, like how do you unlock what's latent? The truth sets you free. So the truth of what? How do you use, you know, the miracles that God made exist for us that we are not making use of? You know what I'm saying? And so my work, you know, is to perform, not do, right? Perform. We're the performer here, right? We're on stage. We're, we're giving a performance, our best one possible. Don't, don't take away from performing means to act. Performing means you're not sitting on the sidelines. You're not just, you know, sitting around thinking about this. You know, you're performing. Performing is performance and action work. You know what I mean? You perform miracles. You, you, that's that's how they happen. You, you uh, by your action, right? Dharma, common law exists. The thing, the that law is latent here. It never goes away. It's never doesn't. It's always here, laid down by God. It always exists. And all the other latent uh, items that God laid down in accordance with that law. And once you understand it, you could go, oh, okay, I see that. That law works like this, and so that, and, and so on, right? And so you, I'm always looking for practical technology, right? This is spiritual technology is the way I think of it. You know, this church is focused on spiritual technology, okay? And, and another way to say, you know, <laughs> spiritual technology is knowledge, right? That's what it is. And it's knowledge in action, and that's how you get experience of the truth, which over time, over many experiences, makes you wise, gives you wisdom, right? You're, that comes from experience only. It doesn't doesn't come from someone telling you something. That's like, that unlocks a possibility in your mind. Oh, wow, then maybe that is true, you know? So, here's the way this game is played, all right? There are three main parts to it. Uh, the first is on what Mayor Baba calls the gross plane or the physical plane. You know, the things that you could touch, a feel, and all that. 
you got to figure that out and, and, and beat that. Basically, I don't want any of your stuff here. Like, I, if this is all there is, I don't want it. Bring me God. That's how you, you know, what's behind this? Screw this. You know, get, get God up in here. Let's go. This is no good. If this is all there is, this is not going to work for me. Uh, and so that brings you to the spiritual path, you know, that everything's a freaking lie. You're like, you look around, everybody's an idiot. Because they were programmed that way. They were taught that. They were taught to be stupid in school from day one by a whole bunch of other programmed, you know, characters in here, right? That are absolutely lying, and then later you find out they're doing it on purpose. They're lying and programming you, you know, to not know the truth on purpose. It's like, wait a second, I have an adversary in here, right? See, the devil is our adversary. Absolute. How could God have an adversary? Jesus Christ. Christ is the, is the term that means, you know, it's it's the title. You're given a title, and only one holds that title, right? Uh, of truly being the Christ, okay? So, rules everything, right? So, how could the ruler of everything with, you know, the, the first with no second have an adversary of, you know, like, come on. Like, when the devil comes to, quote, tempt Jesus, no, Jesus set up that temptation. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm planning to get up in your grill and say, I don't want anything here. You see what I'm saying? Jesus is like, yeah, I'm going to go down and tell everybody that they're wrong and this is reality how's that gonna go for you jesus it's gonna go like crap but it's gonna be the truth and everybody's gonna you know have a reaction to it so much to the point that the devil's gonna be coming and say hey you're kind of messing up my whole thing here with your old truth thing buddy boy you know how about i give you everything of this earth how about is that a fair trade and jesus is like I'm going to pass on that one because Jesus set it up, right? Jesus wasn't tempted, right? Jesus set up the devil coming and making the offer and Jesus knew the answer. Uh, no, you know, just like I knew the answer. No, oh, no, thanks. Oh, here you are. And here's my answer. There we go, right? So, you know, you have to look to easy, simple, uh, Spiritual technology, which I also call repeatable miracles. In other words, abilities that are latent in you and our existence. They're latent here. They exist, not just for me, not not just for some other individual, but for all. Do you see what I'm saying? And so I want to get into one of those items. So this is spiritual technology, okay? And it's stuff I've tested and tested and tested and tested and tested and tested and tested. And I would love your feedback on your uh, testing of the spiritual technology. And this is one I use always. I This is the main spiritual technology that I use at this point. Okay, because there's you got to beat them on the gross plane and then there's... Uh, you know, as Mayor Baba said, that he, he said there are three, you know, basically you have to pass through these three uh, veils, you know, kind of like uh, uh, parts of the game. How's that? That everyone has to pass through. It's all the same path for everyone. Although everyone goes through these uh, planes of spiritual consciousness in a different way because we're all our own individuals. Um, but the planes themselves and what is there, that's, a, that exists, you know, that, that's, that is what it is. And, uh, it's very hard to figure out, um, until you start to figure it out, then it becomes easier and easier and you, and you, you know, it all fits together. The, you get one puzzle piece, you're like, well, I wonder what this goes to. And then you get more puzzle pieces and then the picture, you know, becomes full and you're like oh you're not hidden from me anymore now you and with with them not being hidden and also you know what they can do not being hidden uh allows you to work on you know okay what's the counter force to that right this is our adversary so god of course gave us a way to deal with our adversary a simple way it's going to be simple easy and everyone must do it right okay 
But let me let me just go through the planes here in these planes of consciousness. To, and then once I explain that, you'll see why this works and why it's so important. Because you really have to make this a habit, okay? It's, it's not a difficult habit, but I want to give you the importance of why it's so important to develop this habit. Okay. And uh, I'll give you the actual technology that you can use. Okay, it's very simple. Um, and so then the, the next area that we have to beat is a subtle plane. S-U-B-T-L-E, subtle, right? Okay, there's this uh, HBO uh, series going on right now called His Dark Materials. And in there, there's this knife that can cut into the subtle plane, into the subtle realm. It's called a subtle knife. And the subtle plane is what you can't see. You know what I mean? Like the angels that move at the ether. What's it? What you can't see. You can see that it exists. You know from what's going on around you, but you can't see it. You see, uh, the angels move at a different rate. They're invisible. They're in it in the etheric plane. They're not. They're here, but they're not here. They can see everything here. And they can slow down and interact with you, take any form, and, and be whatever their role is supposed to be, right? They could do all that. That's, you know, the fallen angels. That's their, their, they could come and go from the physical plane into the subtle plane. And some don't come out of the subtle plane. Like, you watch a movie. <coughs> there are too many movies. Okay, there are just too many movies and TV shows. There are too many. Where are they filming all these? Where do, what is this, the budget of 100% of the gross national product of every country goes to making movies and TV series? What? Are, what? It's insane, right? It's insane. The quantity is, is just, it's impossible. It's absolutely possible. These things are not being filmed, you see. Special effects are generally a hoax. You know, they're doing all these things over in the subtle realm, you know, where you dream, where you're asleep and you have dreams, you're in the subtle realm. That place exists. You're, you have dreams. They exist. You know, these angels are carrying on. All this stuff is happening around us, right? It occurs. Uh, you can see it. You can actually see it when you fall asleep, right? You can see the subtle realm. Oh, I, I, you're there. You're actually there at that time. Do you see? And so you have to beat that subtle realm. And then you have to, after that, if you beat that realm, you beat the mental realm. You see the thoughts. You have to beat your thoughts in the end. You, you, your, your thoughts and feelings. That's, that's in the mental realm. Thoughts and feelings. Feelings is a lot in the subtle realm too. You come past them. Uh, mostly, but still, uh, it's, there's, they still exist, you know, the feelings and so on, have you, but it, but it's really the thoughts, you have to beat the thoughts, okay, that, and because the tools of the mental, of beating the mental realm, uh, are so significant that that's the last of it, and then you get Christ consciousness, that it's important to use the tools let me say it another way. The tools that beat, right, that win the game in the mental realm, of course apply to all the other realms, right, the subtle and the, and the gross. Of course it, it beats all them included from then on out. You see what I'm saying? So once you beat the mental game, you have beaten the all, all you could beat any other parts of the other game. Do you see? And so I like to go exactly to this technology, okay? What do we have? Okay, we have a Savior. What's his name? Jesus Christ. That's it. That's our sword. You have a sword. You and I have, there is a, uh, a latent sword that exists for us. It terrorizes the other team. It lays them to waste. The they have no, you know. It's like, uh, uh, you know, uh, let's say Shaq's playing in his prime in basketball, and it's like, okay, well, pick your best high school players who to go up against Shaq. It's not gonna. No matter which high school player you pick, you know, is they're gonna lose bad. 
You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, it's it. once you figure out what wins, you win. Okay? So, I know that's a lot of uh, information as sort of a setup as a background and so on, but it's important to take this in uh, and see how, you know, once I give the technology, then we'll work back through why it works. Okay? So, anyway, here's this, the name. We have the sword, the name, Jesus Christ. So, this is what I test, okay, in two different ways, okay? I use this technology all the time. Uh, I, uh, I go to the beach a lot. I go to the drum circles, you know, here to, cause it's all, you know, first of all, a circle is, a, you know, it's a crucible. It's a, uh, map of the earth with a center point that we find ourselves in. And at a drum circle, the drummers never enter it. The fairies never enter the cir fairy circle, right? Uh, they're on the outside looking in. They just play the drums and you go in. It's like a powwow. They have a drum circle. Same thing. Okay. Uh, you know, it's a very important spiritual ritual. Uh, you know, it can be. I think it, it is. It's also, you know, it doesn't have any rules except for the rules that exist in our existence. Do you see? Anyway, I go there to test spiritual technology. Do you, do you see? And so there's, you know, if I'm there, the highest level, blink in and out of the ether fairies, it's, 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 they're there, the top ones, you know, they, they call it the Shire where I live. I was <laughs> directed to their Shire to live. Like I'm going to mess up, you know, home base for them. I'm going straight to that lovely little you know, fairyland and I will the truth will live it there and so anyway I'm there they're very good at, there's you know I'm not just here to help the 7,000 humans I'm here and I everywhere I go if if uh I'm here to help them as well so everywhere I go if they're kind to me if they help with me I literally say to them in their face oh you got some feathers for your wings I'm going to pray for you in the name of Jesus. And these fairies, these fallen angels, they're re-earning their wings lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. And they know it. Of course they know it. How could... <laughs> There's nothing... That's their existence. How could they not know that? You know? <laughs> anyway. Uh, it's so funny. The people think they don't... I mean, this this is what they are. How could they not know that? And so I literally pray for them as I go because if if they they have to submit their everyone does at every level has to serve one another you know we have to serve God we have to serve the thirty three I'm in service of them look you you know I go right to their drum circle right to wherever they are their courtroom whatever hey you don't have to be what you told you have to be watch i'm going to show you you don't watch i'm going to i'm going to exist over here not being what you're told the only thing you could be and i'm fine i'm actually happier that you are i'm doing better even if you got a bigger house or whatever i'm fine you know where i'm going you know you can't touch me you know you have no power over me you know i've beaten you and so they have to see that you've beaten them too, in order for them to progress and realize I want to play the game, I want to get back to God too and prove myself to God and play this game. You see, you're here for them. Your service is for them. Yes, you have to help yourself, of course, but as you go, you literally pray for them in the name of Jesus silently too. That is a spiritual technology, what I just gave you, okay? You have to understand the importance of what I just told you because you're giving them not just forgiveness. You're, you're asking God, Hey, you know, they're doing better. You know, your prayers are letting God know, Hey, this fallen angel is actually redirected themselves. Right. And, and they're doing better. They, cause it's how they treat the players of the game, how, you know, and each other, but really mainly, you know, how they treat the players of, in this game, the 7,000 humans, it's how they treat them. What happens to them? Did they follow their role? Were they as evil as they were supposed to be? Were they as good as they were supposed to be? What, right? 
pray for them. Okay, but once you learn the truth, it's like, I'm just getting to God, so listen over there. Uh, you just pray Jesus Christ's name. You see over and over in your mind. And they can't get in your mind. That's the technology behind us. You, you forgive them. That doesn't allow them access, you know, because you, you, they for, you've forgiven them and everyone. So they, there's no reason for them to jump into your mind, into your psyche, be inside of you, know your thoughts and so on. So you just let them know you're praying for them, you know, you say Jesus Christ over and over in your mind. Also, what I do, this technology can be used. And this is how I want you to, you know, test this very unusual piece of this to make this very real for you okay if you're just if you're in a busy place and there's you know uh busy i mean busy like let's say you're at a train station or there's people there or you're walking downtown or you know wherever your life is busy you're in, in walmart it's a busy time of day when you know i particularly go to those places you know and in those moments i'm testing spiritual technology what they have, what I have, and so on. Now, if you're in a busy place like that, I do this myself mainly, this piece of technology when I'm on the sand because it's easy to do. I'll be, uh, but I could do it anywhere. I've done it anywhere. You basically draw a circle with your toe on the ground. And you say Jesus Christ, day the day, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. And you close the circle with your toe around you. And basically, they you're in like a shaft, you to heaven, you know, you have cut off your mind from them, and they they don't have access. So, when you close a circle, is sort of I I hear like you may not. It takes a minute, you know, but no thoughts are going in. It closes the thoughts of others off. The, and, and your programmed reaction to what's around you. Uh, whatever it may be. Oh, there's a freaking copies, you know, right behind me or whatever. You know, there's, oh my gosh, she's so gorgeous. Or he's so handsome. Or, you know, oh my God, that's exactly the freaking uh, thing I wanted. That my God, that $2,000 thing looks like it's worth it over there. I might want to buy that or whatever, you know? All these thoughts, what whatever they are, you know, uh, that are coming from outside of you based on your circumstances, your programming, whatever it is, you know? If you use that name and draw that circle, it's like whoosh. That tape loop ends. It's just like click. And you're standing there, you, you don't notice it beginning because you're not maybe battling on the mental realm all the time. But this will bring this battle to initiate within you, okay? And that is to see the difference. Do you see what I'm saying? You're standing there, you're in a busy place and, you, you know, you have to come away from your thoughts that are not your thoughts that are being sent you see you have to separate from them at at all times you you realize you're not the one creating thoughts no 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 you're the entity that is having a reaction to them should i do this should i not do this you're the one to weigh them on your scales what should you do but you're not the one creating them do you see what i'm saying so as soon as you use the spiritual technology of using Jesus Christ's name to give yourself a circle around yourself and pray it within yourself, you know, that's the only thing that's going to exist right then. All of the rest of everything just disappears. The feelings, the thoughts, all of that is gone. It takes a minute to feel that in a way, though, because you're in a busy place, right? You're like, oh my God, all this stuff is still going on. It's still going on. But then you notice... This whole other thing isn't going on. You see all this, all this thoughts and reaction that just goes away. The only thing that happens in there is thoughts from God, you know, and it's happy thoughts, you know, and it's quiet happy thoughts. And this is a way, like Bear Baba say, you have to get. I don't come within you until you get everything else out of you. The shadow has to go. Then I can come in never before. 
Okay, so that means God comes into you, right? When there's nothing else inside of you but God, period. You're not having other thoughts or feelings or da 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 da. This is a practice. This is this is not you know meditation. You know, like just sitting there listening to thought. Nah, what's you're forced to listen to thoughts. I mean, I, I get meditation helps calm the mind or something like that, but calms for what to enter, what to listen to. You see what I'm saying? No. <coughs> Nip it in the butt. Take out your take out your sword and cut. Take out the sword of his name and cut them away. Cut the vines away. Cut the cut the spider webs away. You know what I mean? Cut the cocoon. The, the chrysalis, right, that you find yourself within, this programmed matrix around you, the drop bubble. As a pair bubble goes, you're a drop from that bubble, from that ocean above the firmament. You're just trying to get back into the ocean. Do you not get that, you see? And so you're trying to cut yourself out of this. You see, you need a sword to do it. And you have to cut through their control of you through control you know of course they control your thoughts you don't create them something besides you is controlling them and the only one you want controlling or uh or giving you any thoughts or feelings or whatever is your god jesus christ you don't want anything else that it the rest of it is not going to help you get down your spiritual path to god it's going to stop it that is where you beat your adversary. You become single-minded. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, whatever comes in front of you, whomever, you understand this is a pre-programmed game and everything in front of you is your adversary for you to get into Jesus Christ. Everyone and everything, including your children, and your wife and your husband and everything, they are the final difficulties. You... I'm not saying you don't love them or love them less. Absolutely not. No, 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 no. But you must bend your knee ahead of your children, even to God, your maker, your ruler, your Lord, or else you can't, you, you can't show your children what's the right thing to do. You haven't shown them what's right. You have to bend your knee to the supreme almighty Lord of all who sent to you your, your children and created them for you to be steward and watched as you were raising them and so on. They're not yours. I mean, you should treat them like they're yours, of course. And, uh, you know, you don't treat them any way less. You treat them more carefully. Do you follow what I'm saying? More carefully for that reason. Anyway, uh, the spiritual technology is extremely important and you become single-minded. Of course, you, you know, you, you, you're here to work for God, but, but you're working for others, right? Your, your loved ones first, your family first. And then, you know, once you get them situated, if you ever do, that you do your best for others, but you do your best for others as you go. And if all you have, you know what your best is? Your prayers for someone else. That's your absolute best. There is nothing better. So when you interact with someone and you know, you know, these fairies, these fallen angels, whatever, they're always, almost always got a tattoo. They don't always, but their powers are usually on their arms, on their forearms. So you know who they are. I, you know, oh, thank you for your help. You know, I'm going to say a prayer for you. Your, your wings, your, your feathers, you watch their eyes. Because they could have read your mind because you were saying Jesus Christ to your mind. They're already freaked out like they, you blinded them. So they know that's a rare thing that occurs and they know it only occurs for one reason. So they're looking at you, right? Oh, this is one of them. And they are treating you like that, right? But then you know who they are and you have the foreknowledge, foresight, and the ability to help and save them by praying for them. Because they can't get saved by anyone else but Jesus in a way. And they can only change their actions and interact with us and then be raised up. Oh, hey, that's the way you should treat them, right? Right? You're, you're their servant until you play the game. That's why you're, the, you know, the fallen ages. What? We can do so much more stuff than that. We're not, we're not 
you know, do what the humans say. It's like, yeah, no, I told you, you are. And so everyone comes through that. Every That's part of evolution, right? You evolve through all the forms, including the angel form, and then you come into the final form of human form, right? The final human form. And then uh, this is where we battle, you know, came through all the physical evolution and, and had every form. And now we're into the involution, right? We're, we're, it's an inward battle. We have to beat and get back to God. It's an inward battle. It's not the form is allows us to have this inner battle. You see, we've reached the top form. We have the top mental ability. We have the top spiritual ability. We've been automatically, uh, uh, we've automatically, the cream has automatically risen right to the top of the milk. It's automatic. It's a process. It's automatic. We've done that process, but the, now we have consciousness. We have done this game to develop individualized consciousness and yet remain in the ocean with our individualized consciousness. We're bringing back the truth, right? Oh, this is true freedom. And once you feel not being here on the other side, you never want to be back here for a second, not ever. So it's worth winning the game it's so worth it it's nothing nothing here is of value when you reach a you know certain plane and you go there and you're you're like oh my god this place just sucks but you know it sucks so bad so bad comparatively that all you want to do is help everyone get out of this mire and muck that you were absolutely you know still find it all over your feet here, you know, <laughs> but you're leaving, but you're still stuck in the mud of Woodstock, right? Oh, I'm still here. My ride hasn't come yet. Anyway, so I wanted to, you know, kind of set that framework in there of the level of importance of uh, using the name of God in this way. This is for people, if you haven't signed the trust and you're listening to this, uh, you, you, have to, you, you need to go back and, and do that for all the reasons I've explained. But past that, that allows you to move into your spiritual technology, beating them on the gross plane, right, with the trust and so on. That applies to the other, all the other planes. Well, if you read Mary Baba's work, a perfect master can bring you to the final plane. And make you see it. I can, I, I can see. I can show you. I've told you every step of the path to the end and how to get there. This is the technology. This is the end technology is the name of God. Mir Baba had many disciples. And one of his disciples, literally, he would give them different jobs to do. Hey, you're in the kitchen. You're doing this or whatever. And he would do it, he said, based on your, uh, you know, your karma. And, and, uh, so I'm helping you out. And he was. One individual, uh, his, he had one single job every day. He, it, it, he had it for years and years and years. Say the name of God 10,000 times every day and count them. 10,000. That was literally his job every day. He, he he's trying to you know because God comes in a human form in a, or in a human character laid down in books and photos and whatever this is the storyline of here because God made it the storyline I didn't I, it's latent here because it exists here the story exists so, so whatever you see it, oh God was Krishna Jesus said you know, you know, whoever held the title of, of Christ, ruler of the crystal sphere, right? Whoever held that title uh, always had, you know, information in their story of their character to give us, to help us win this game. You see, that's why they came here. That's why they wanted to show us, oh, this is this how you win. You know what I'm saying? And it's always... Uh, what was I going to with Bear Baba? Uh, oh, yeah, where he has his 10,000 names. I'm sorry. So, you know, he he's 
if you have disciples or you're playing the character of you know the savior and so on a god or whatever in human form what you do is important you know you figure it out oh, but it, you know because especially since it's part of our tape loop in our past that we have access to that's latent here am i saying jesus lived or bear baba lived i don't even know it doesn't even matter it doesn't matter at all it matters is it's a it is our story it exists here this is what's latent here this is what god decided for us that's what matters and so when bear baba has a guy saying god's name ten thousand times a day and that's the only thing he does for his whole life that's it really literally nothing else literally that was a single service i mean have you ever heard of such a thing for what purpose do you see what i'm saying it's it's that's the power is saying the name jesus christ that's what he's trying to tell everyone do you see you see the power is in the name of god you have to say it okay so that's a spiritual technology piece it's a very important piece it always works no matter how difficult the situation if there are 15 cops armed to the teeth that you're seat, seated or whatever it still works it always works it all oh, it never fails never will fail <laughs> you see never will fail and so use it practice it practice it when there aren't 15 cops and then guess what the 15 cops they're not coming they don't want to feel that heat no way they don't like it you know once you figure this out and you get it it doesn't go well over on their side you can see like they have reaction like steam is shooting out of their freaking ears or their eyeballs they just like start to scoot away they don't like it you know anyone bringing you like you know, oh, I'm going to do this or that. Nah, they leave. It works for everyone. Okay. All right. So uh, try out that spiritual technology. And I'd love to uh, get your feedback on that. And maybe you, as you use it, you go, oh, hey, you know, because you're going to cut out all these other thoughts. And so what are you going to have more of uh, information from God? And you, you're going to be like, and you have your own unique situation, so God may get, deliver you information that's relevant to everyone. You're not more or less than me or anyone. God, God loves you equal, us, us each equally. And so this technology allows you to, you know, go to or say uh, union with God. Yoga is a word in Sanskrit that means union. So who you join it with, that's what matters. Yoga is not good or bad. Is how you use it. It's, it's simply spiritual technology. That's all it is for the physical and for the subtle and, and ultimately for the mental. You know, you have to beat them in the mind. That's nothing else matters as much. If you have a broken body, if you, you know, a leper, a, you know, quadriplegic or whatever, that stuff in the end on the spiritual path has no meaning. You see, that may drive you down the path away from the gross plane faster, you know what I mean, to this uh, information, to winning the spiritual game. You have to view this game for what it is and pray for others as you go. And not just pray for, make not just because it's a habit, because you understand who they are, what they're doing, they have a difficult role to play, and they're playing that role for you to win your soul and go to God. I mean, thank you, really, you know, can't be easy over there playing the fallen angel, but hey, I appreciate it. You're pretty freaking annoying at times, but apparently you had to be because God say you had to be, or else you don't earn your wings to get back to God. So you just had a role to play. You're, you're That's all. And now I beat you. I'm going to beat you. i got to keep beating you. And you're never going to win and I'm out of here. Because you can't control me. And so once you can't control my thoughts this so you're powerless over me. What? All I'm, <laughs> See, in the end, all you're doing is saying God's name and you, what you do with God. Well, what? What is the end thing of this whole game? Union with God and your thoughts are with God. That's it. That's the whole thing. You see, so if you practice that, 
now. If you practice the end game now, how fast are you going to get there? Fast. Just take the, take, you know, you could take, you know, the local trolley or you could take the Tokyo bullet train, right? It's up to you and, and your actions. I'm telling you that Tokyo bullet train go so fast to God, you start saying his name over and over in every situation. And you you pray for others as you go and you literally say it to them that you pray for them. And in you don't say you're gonna pray for them. Uh I'm I'm praying for I am praying for you, right? I'm not it's not your a future thing. You do it then in front of them. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus Christ, you earn your wings and feathers. Literally, right then. You pray for them then. And off you go. And then your karma is free and you did your best thing you could do for them. What else can you do for them that's better? You can't do anything. Right? Call attention to God that, hey, help them. How could you do anything better? Right? You're supposed to love your neighbors. What's the most loving thing you can do? Pray for them in their face in the name of Jesus Christ. There is nothing else more loving you could do for them. And it's how you win this game. <coughs> okay, I know that was a long one, but it's such an important thing. This is the only habit in the end. There is no other habit. You see what I'm saying? Then you're one with God and your thoughts that come to you. What? You're like, hey, it's your fault, God. You you know what I mean? If you If I'm sitting here praying your name and... You sent me a thought that wasn't from you. That's really your fault. You see what I'm saying? I was sitting here praying your name over and over and over. I put it on him. It's on you. If you did send me, if you sent me the wrong thought, that's on you. You're God. How could you send me the wrong thought? That's impossible. So you're like, you just, you know, wait for the thoughts that have no fear or malice or difficulty in them or anything like that. It's a much quieter thought and it's a much more relaxed thought but it's also you know the right thought like it's like oh shit that's the... and then all of the rest of your because what was on your mind your concern or whatever maybe that you had about some issue or whatever falls away because you got the right answer instantly you're like oh my god that's it so easy you know you need the information of what you should be doing uh, not from thoughts, from, you know, uh, you don't want to be a lunatic, you don't want to get your thoughts from the mind, from hell, from your adversary, from the jinn, from the demons, from the devil, you don't want them from there, you cut them off with the, with a sword, you know, all the time, you're always like, you know, chop a matic, baby, slice, cut, cut, just stay away from me, Reach out to the subtle plate or mental plate or whatever. I would chop you off. And who likes to get their fingers cut off? No, nobody. It's like keep coming. I keep chopping them off. They quit. They quit sticking their hands out. You see, because they have a hive mind. So if one of them gets their hand chopped off, they all feel it. It's like, oh, watch out for that one. Uh huh. Who wants their hand chopped off next? Oh, it's you. Okay, Jesus Christ, Jesus got there. Ah. You see, they don't keep it up for long. Because that hive mind, this this is this penetrates the hive mind right to the absolute center core. Ding! Oh my God, he, this is a winner coming through. Watch this one, and they start to treat you much, 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 much nicer, much nicer. You see, you won the game. <laughs> I would. It's not. I'm going to tear down. You know. No, you're. You're still going to. Make your spiritual progress and, and, you know, illuminate the path for others by your actions and still do repeatable miracles and still find out the sp spiritual technology. This path goes on and on until Judgment Day, you know. You, you're still doing that, but they lose the power over you. And that's where the real game begins. That's where you become not played by them and their thoughts and stuff, but no, you got your oar in the water now, baby. <laughs> yeah. What do I see? What are you fallen angels up to? You better be good out there. I'm, I'm watching you. You see them say it, and you are. You, everywhere you walk now, they know who you, they know what's up, and how they treat you, they are their wigs or not. Okay? 
You have to focus on this. You have to make this. Your inner journey has to start and end here with the name of God all day, all night, all the time. If you do that, your pathway will uh, widen and will be easier as you go. They fear that name. They react to that name and they bow to that name and they will let you pass. They must. Watch them as you go. But first do the thing, you know, get them out of your mind. Use that name, draw a circle like that. Do that. Practice this technology. Okay. Keep me posted, all right? Thanks for staying to the end. And thanks for the support. I've had, uh, you know, two donors support. I just really shout out to Jay and, and uh, Roxy. Uh, very meaningful. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, God bless you both and everyone in the name of Jesus Christ.